Hello, we are Team One. I'm Angel Baez. My team members are Lies Buzegza and Gustavo Vasquez. And we'll be talking about traditional gear trains. So gears are used everywhere in the world today. I mean, anywhere you look, you can find them in automobiles, in uh, appliances, anything you can think of. Uh, they played a very vital role in industrialization in the world today. Uh, they can be very simple and they can be very complex depending on what gear need is. And uh, gears are, gear trains are constantly being redesigned. It's a never ending uh, job. Well, now let me talk about history of, train, of gear trains. Uh, gears are considered one of the oldest pieces of equipment made, made by man. Early gears were made from wood with cylindrical pegs for cogs uh, and were often lubricated with animal fat of grease. Um, also, some early examples are traced from back to China, such as the South Pointing Carrier that was made approximately in the 27th century BC. Uh, in the 4th century BC, Aristotle stated that gears were commonly used in different applications. Also, he wrote that the direction of rotation is reversed, is reversed when one gear hill drives another gear. In 500 AD, Leonardo da Vinci utilized multitude of gears the mechanisms that he constructed. Um, also, Romans and Greeks also show extensive usage of gears for motion and their literature. In the, in the 15th century, gears were introduced in the agriculture field. Wood was primarily used as a material to make toothed wheel in order to transmit power from a human power train mill to a mining pump. In the 18th century, industrialization changed gear technology, uh, making a big impact in the field, which became the key to future mechanical systems. Also, in the 1832, Richard Roberts patented a gear differential for locomotives. Last but not least, actually, industrial and automobile fields has increased more complex years. Uh, right here we can see two pictures. The first one that shows a carrier using warm gears, and the other one, the gears made of wood that people use on the agriculture mining pump. Now let me talk about gear types utilized in uh, gear trains. The main two types are the spur and helical gears. They both in, have a cylindrical shape. Uh, the main difference is the form or the shape of their teeth. Uh, helical gears have uh, angled teeth, while the, sp uh, the spur gear has straight teeth parallel to the axis of the gear. Uh, at higher speeds, uh, spur gears become very noisy, so it's recommended to use them just for lower speeds while uh, the helical gears are very quiet for any uh, given speed. Bevel gears, um, they, they are uh, used to transmit torque between two perpendicular shafts. Um, they are intersecting and perpendicular. Uh, they are conic. Uh, their teeth can be either uh, straight or, um, or, or angled. Warm gears, Transmit power between perpendicular shafts that are not intersecting. Um, the, spur, the warm gear has only one teeth um, in the form of a screw thread. And instead of rolling like any other type of gears, they slide and create friction that affects the efficiency of this entire system. So this, this type has a very low, very low efficiency compared to the others. Now let me talk about traditional gear trains. The simplest and easiest one is the simple gear train. It is very linear. Every shaft has uh, a maximum of, of, of one gear. The intermediate gears are used only to, um, to uh, change the direction of motion 
uh, of the input to the output. The compound gear train has at least one of its shaft, uh, one of, at least one of its shaft has uh, two, uh, two gears. Uh, in this type, the, the, the intermediate gears um, play a role in changing uh, the velocity ratio of the entire system. And finally is the reverted gear train. Um, they are used uh, in systems where uh, the input and the output are concentric. The best example for that is a, is a watch. Um, we have the minutes and the seconds and, and they have only one shaft. So uh, that's, that's a, a very good example of that. So the velocity ratio is a relation between the input and the output velocities and it can be calculated by multiplying the number of teeth of the driven gears and dividing that by the multiplication of the number of the driving gears. Or you can do the, the velocity of the input divided by the velocity of the output. And uh, another common thing that's used is the train velocity and it's basically just a reciprocal of the, of the velocity ratio. Um, gear trains are used in just about in, in a lot of things. Uh, some examples are like automobiles, gearboxes, differentials, on the right here, gear differentials. Uh, planetary gear trains are used in uh, automatic transmissions, and uh, gear, gear uh, chain drives are used like on bicycles and motorcycles, ATVs. And here you can see some examples. This is an internal view of an automobile gearbox with the, the, the shift port, the, the, the port and uh, multiple, multiple stacks of gears for different speeds. And that's a view of the automobile differential that basically transmits power into the back tires. Thank you for watching.